Hello ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to Evolving Consciousness. We often would have used GPS in our day-to-day -day navigation, whether it's to buy, to book an Uber ride or if you, want, if you are wandering through your personal vehicle. A GPS, a geopositioning system, helps us navigate to a destination seamlessly. But what if I asked you, who could serve as being the GPS of life? On the auspicious occasion of Guru Purnima, my today's video is a humble tribute and a big shout out to all those people who are acting as mentor coaches and guides in their respective domains. And also the video will talk about how instrumental and how indispensable the role of a mentor or a guru in the modern day context is. Now, if you want to talk about guru, right? Let's talk about the Sanskrit word guru. If you deconstruct this word guru, gu in Sanskrit means darkness and ru means dispelling or removing. A guru is a person who dispels darkness, the darkness born out of ignorance, the darkness born out of a lack of knowledge. He is a person who qualifies to be called a guru, who himself is an epitome of wisdom, for whose life is inseparable without wisdom. Now in the context of spirituality, the word guru has a higher pedestal. Guru is a huge topic in itself. The importance of guru is being talked about by legends since time immemorial. And when we talk about a Guru, it's often said that the place of a Guru is higher than even God's place. And they often say in spiritual cultures and spiritual disciplines that you cannot directly contact God or you cannot directly have a communion with God unless you are guided by a right Guru. But my today's video is not only going to encompass the concept of a spiritual Guru, but Guru can be from any walk of life. Though the word has a lot of weightage in the domain of spirituality, but I would also like to throw light on parallel paradigms, paradigms of corporate world, paradigms of material world, which are of more significance and importance which more with, for most of us. Because we resonate mostly with the material world, especially most of us, like you and me, we need to work 9 to 5 jobs and we need to be in this material world. What is the importance of a mentor in these contexts? This is also going to be the focus of my video. Now Isaac Newton put it so beautifully. He said, the only reason I am able to see far off places, the only reason I am able to see far off places is because I have the capacity, the capability, the opportunity to climb over the shoulders of giants. I am able to see far off destinations because I got the opportunity to climb over shoulders of giants. This is how much importance and gratitude, homage which Isaac Newton played, gave to his mentors. If you look at anyone in the material world who has achieved phenomenal success, anyone who has achieved phenomenal success in his field of work, you will notice a pattern. You will notice that each of these legends had a mentor, had a guru in his life who sort of served as a GPS system to navigate towards his goal. If you consider Shah Rukh Khan, the man who has conquered the film industry, he had a lot of good mentors in his acting career. His num the first mentor which Haruk ever had was Barry John. Barry John was his mentor in the theatre. When Shahrukh started off in the theatre, Barry John was the person who served as a mentor to him. And Shahrukh even to date has a beautiful and a cordial relationship with his mentor. Because he understands the importance, the instrumental role the mentor played in Shahrukh's career. Now, often times, we all have so many mentors in life. <clears throat> the very first mentors 
anyone has in the, is his own parents. It is said that your parents are your first gurus. I have been very fortunate to have a great set of parents. Parents who have taught me so many different things in life. They taught me the importance of discipline. They taught me the importance of having a serious relationship with time. And they taught me how wasting time is like wasting wealth. Because time is essentially your commodity and time is essentially your wealth. Time wasted is life wasted. And they always told me one very important thing. That the true source of happiness is contribution, not hoarding, not just enjoying, but how you can give back to nature. That was their principal teaching. That is something they always encouraged me to do in my own small ways. And every human being is capable of contributing, no matter in which walk of life you belong to. And this was one of the values. There are a lot of values which were instilled in me by them. But this is one of the core values. The value of service. The value of contribution. And the contribution which doesn't really expect anything much in return. That contribution is the source of true joy. And they also showcase through their own conduct the power of resilience the power of never say that attitude. I saw my parents navigate the toughest challenges of life and getting up stronger, getting up mightier, getting up with a bang. As they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, makes you better. And when they instill these kind of values in me, it made me a more resilient personality. It made me a more gritty personality. And I'm sure that you can also, you probably also have learned a ton of qualities from your parents. And let us understand this. Not everything what you learn from your parents is something to inculcate. There are certain things which you learn from them which should not be a part of your conduct. Let me give you a very interesting story. In one of my earlier videos, I had given this real life story example. But I would like to reiterate this because oftentimes most of us like to complain. They like to complain about the fact that their parents didn't contribute to their growth in life. I want to give a story of two brothers, two brothers who were born in a slum. They were sons of a drunkard. The father, the father who was a very poor man was a habitual drunkard and he used to beat up his own wife. And it so happens, 10 years down the line, one of the son becomes a business tycoon and another son continues to stay in the same slum, continues to stay in the same downtrodden conditions. And one of the media guy, when he's having an interview, having a conversation with this business tycoon, he says, Sir, how come you made it so far in life and how come your sibling still is at the same level? He said, my father was my first teacher. He told me what not to do in life, to become a failure. That person has a vision, he had a filtering lens through which he imbibed the learnings. He was not a parrot like his sibling, where he just mirrored the behavior of his parents. This is where intellect comes in. This is where Viveka, discrimination, the faculty of discrimination is one of those faculties which distinguishes a human being from an animal. Oftentimes, most of us don't have, don't use this faculty. And as the saying goes, if you don't use your faculties, your faculties turn weaker. The simple principle of gym wherein the more you work on your muscles, the stronger they get. The same principle holds true for your mental faculties. The reason I brought in this example was, oftentimes people like to crib, complain. This is the hallmark quality of victims. But a leader, a titan, is someone who sort of inculcates learning from even the most dire situations. Not all situations will be conducive. But it's our job 
to make it conducive. Ratan Tata puts it so well. He says, and I quote, he says, I don't take right decisions. I take decisions and then make them right. I don't take right decisions. I will take decisions and then make them right. Such is the power of thought process of legends. Coming back to our concept of guru, coming back to the concept of mentorship. Now, people who belong to some school of thought or spirituality, they can easily understand, resonate the importance. They can sort of look at, they can also appreciate the heavy weight which a guru is considered to in the domain of spirituality. But if you look at the layman importance of a mentor, of a significance of a mentor, you will begin to realize that anyone, as I mentioned, anyone who has done stellar in his life, there is always a mentor. As I quoted the example of Shah Rukh Khan, there are innumerable instances in our life. If you look at the sports industry, the Saina Neva, Gopi Chan is considered one of the top coaches in India. Now, why, why is the coach so important? Because let's understand the coach is viewing you through the outside. He is able to objectively tell what are your strengths and weaknesses. And this is the biggest gift. And more than that, the coach or the guru has tons of experience in that field. And let's say that you want to move from point A to point B. One option is that you can struggle through the different paths. Let's say from point A to point B, you have different routes. Route 1, Route 2, Route 3. And one option is to have a trial and, trial and error approach and iterate through all the paths are the most sensible approaches to take the assistance and guidance of a mentor. Because when you take the guidance and assistance of a mentor, life becomes seamless. Life becomes more effortless. It is beautifully said that people who are okay in their thought process, they learn from their own mistakes. But wise are the people who learn from others' mistakes. And a mentor is a person who can guide you in that direction, help you maneuver to the difficult choices of life, be it in any field. Now, let's talk about my personal journey with mentors and teachers of my own life. As I said, my parents were my very first teachers and they gave me such powerful core values which is going to help me throughout my life, throughout the journey, the voyage of life. This is the values which they imbibed in me is going to help me to navigate through the different parts of life, to the different curves of life. Also the fact that a guru or a mentor can be symbolized as a lighthouse in the dark ocean where you are, let's say you are sort of navigating the ocean through a ship and you are sort of in that storm situation and if you see a lighthouse there you know where you need to maneuver. Let's say that you don't have a lighthouse. Just understand the pathetic situation a person can encounter. Funnily enough, there are some people in our life and in our surroundings who don't understand the importance of a mentor. The fact is, they don't even realize that they are in ignorance. They think they are great. One of the very key enemies of knowledge and one of the things which separates us from being more convenient or more, more communion with Guru is this word, the three-letter word called ego. It's beautifully said, ego is a three-letter word which kills the seven-letter world and murders at the seven-letter world for relationship. Now, people with the inflated ego, they always are bound to this perception that they are right. They are completely close to the possibility of looking at things to the other person's perspective. And this is the sure shot reason for their ignorance. And such people will never get knowledge in life. People who have been someone who have been humble, open to knowledge. As is beautifully said in one of the quotes, this is one of my favorite quotes, it says, when the student is ready, the master appears. When the student is ready, the master appears. Now, coming back to my personal life story. Growing up in my school, I was a good student by all standards. 
and this naturally attracted the attention of a lot of teachers. I was a favorite student of a couple of my teachers and there was a natural attraction towards teachers and that actually enhanced when I started my undergraduate degree, mechanical engineering. I was considered to be the favorite student of some of my teachers. And when I moved, moved on to my master's degree from IIT Madras, there was one teacher who I have deep amount of respect and a lot of gratitude towards him. His name is Srinivasan Chandrasekharan and he is a, a faculty in the ocean department of IIT Madras. That person had a lot of a communion with me in terms of, I learned a lot of aspects about life through him. One of the staunch aspects, one of the defining qualities I learned from him is the importance of being on time. Now this can be very simplistic, this can sound very simple, but let's understand the way you do your small things talks a lot about your character. I know a lot of people who are, who, when they tell you, when they say that, let's say they told you that they will be there at 3 p.m. They will never be at 3 p.m. They will be either at 3.30 or 4 p.m. Because being on time is not a part of their demeanor. They have lived their life in such undisciplined way that it's okay for them to miss out that time. But Srinivas and Chandrasekharan was one sir. There would be a lot of students who would be late by one or two minutes and he would say a strict no to them. I myself had been through that situation and he didn't have any bias towards me. I had to miss that class because I was late by a couple of minutes at me. This is the sign of a true teacher. A true teacher is not biased. A true teacher who is a man who can add value to your life, he will sort of look at you through an unbiased prism without any conditioning, without any biases or favoritism. This is one of the things which he instilled within me and there are a lot of things which he taught me. He was considered to be one of the most strict professors in the department and most of the students would be fearful of considering him or taking him as his guide, as their guide for the project work because they felt that this guy is going to make their life hell. But I chose to differ. The thought process I had was Maybe if this person is so strict, maybe he probably can bring in the best out of me. Because let's understand that a person, a diamond is formed under pressure. If life is smooth around you, if life is very relaxed and calm and casual, you are not going to do anything significant in life. It's only when the going gets tough, you get the opportunity to become tough. And he was one of those teachers in my life who brought in this understanding of structure, of discipline, of trying to be really good at what you're producing. When I did my final year MTech project thesis, there's a lot of iterations I had to go through and every time I thought that my work is done, he would come up with certain mistake. He would sort of figure out a certain mistake and I would find myself a lot of frustrated at times. But when the degree completed and I won a gold medal for academic excellence, I realized that all those frustrating pain points really helped me get that medal. And this is how important it is to have a very stern guru. If your guru is very easy, if your guru is someone very casual by himself, your life is going to turn into a casualty. As I often like to say, people who have a very casual and carefree attitude, life becomes casual with them. Life doesn't take them seriously because they don't respect time. In Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells himself that I am time. And time is such a very important commodity which we often take for granted. And when time starts giving its bad effects on us, we blame the time. The reason we blame the time is we have never respected time. And the importance of having the right Guru, 
primary importance as i mentioned it will help you give a direction in life and once you have a right direction once you know what are your loopholes because a person who is a mentor be it in any field of life he can pinpoint you or he can look at you from an objective prism a prism which is free from biases he can he can serve you the most not people who have biases and this is one beautiful aspect of a true mentor that no matter how well or how connected you are he still doesn't hesitate in telling you your your weaknesses because unless you are not constantly being checked there is no possibility of growth if you put all your weaknesses under the carpet that's a big disservice a guru can do to you sure you can be very nice with him you can build a very cordial relationship with them but the very nature the very reason why we have a mentor in life is because we chose to grow in that domain of life and to all those gurus to the all those gurus in your life today is the day to pay them heartfelt gratitude whether it's your parents whether it's someone in your work domain i am also blessed to have great mentors in my professional realm mentors who never made me feel that they are unapproachable mentors who are always there for me whenever i am petrified with a challenging situation and whenever i get through such kind of people i really feel such a deep amount of respect towards them because a mentor is someone who is helping you navigate through different conditions of your goal to the pathway of your goal in such seamless manner and the experiences which they have is going to save a lot of your own time is going to save a lot of those iterations those failures which you might have to go through in that path so having a guru is an indispensable requirement in the material world for me i have a lot of people like as i mentioned as i progressed to the different graduations i had always a very cordial relationship with my teachers now in the spiritual world my guru is lord shri krishna himself someone who i adore to the core the amount of adoration i have towards the lord cannot be expressed in words and if you are someone who has read the shrimad bhagavad gita you will understand the kind of teachings which lord krishna has given in the bhagavad gita it is such a powerful gps of life so if you are someone who is in any walk of life be it in your career be it in your spiritual life if there is one thing which is going to propel your progress to the next level it is the it is a mentor a great mentor a great guru now often times sometimes it's difficult to find the right mentor the number one way of finding the right mentor is to assess your own progress if you are able to progress in life on the goals which you have set for yourself let's say in your material life you have a certain goal i want to give an example of toastmasters right so i was involved in toastmasters so toastmasters for folks who don't know toastmasters is a global community where the prime focus is on building public speaking skills and it's not that people who are not good in public speaking come to toastmasters people who are excellent speakers also become a part of the toastmasters community because they are people who are hungry for growth they want to move their skill to the next level and in my own journey i had great mentors mentors who had a lot of experience in different domains of public speaking and they helped me move my performance to the next level there was a time in my toastmasters journey where i was not able to move past the area level there's the club level competition the area level competition the district level competition and the division level competition but because of the role of my mentor i was able to move from area to district to division that was the highest achievement i was able to project and i was able to achieve and the role of my mentor was instrumental in that so in whichever life you want to whichever path of life which your goal you want to achieve it is very important to find the right mentor hope my today's video brought about a true light 
on having on the importance of having the right guru thank you so much for your time and as i mentioned don't forget to pay sincere gratitude and homage to all the teachers of your life and a big shout out to all the people who are spreading their light through their guidance and wisdom thank you so much and i'll meet you in the next week bye